Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we're talking about the new round of drama between Demi Lovato and Selena Gomez, and it's all centering around Demi's true love, Max Eric. 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 I don't know, whatever his like Germany last name is. The dude that she got engaged to four months after meeting him. The dude who has been spending the majority of his online career tweeting thirsty shit at celebrities like Demi, Selena, Miley Cyrus, and Ariana Grande. How many red flags do we need in, in one relationship? Apparently Demi needs a few, and we are here to break down some of them. Today we're gonna talk about how to stop being blinded by love, by sweet talkers, fuckboys, and douchebags, but we're also gonna touch a little bit on why this behavior is such a red flag, and what online behavior from dudes like really means. Is a like just a like? Or is there something deeper? Because I let you guys uh, suggest these topics and vote on my Instagram at ShallonXO, and we were pretty split 50-50. I was like, okay, let's just fuse them all into one like gooey, sticky, smarty pants of a video. But before we get started, we've got a brief word from our sponsor. Hey, Shalligators, do you know what I hate? Almost everyone, as it turns out. Sometimes I just need to shut the world out. I need to go into my cocoon of music and meditation and just be left alone. That's why I reach for my own personal, what I call sound force field. Raycon Everyday E25 earbuds. These things and their noise isolation fit are huge in terms of just blocking everyone out. So in case I don't want someone to try to talk to me, if I just want to roam around Target blasting Drake, singing that I am a pop star and not a doctor, I can do these with these discreet little babies. They have a variety of fit options, a ton of really fun colors, six hours of playtime, like so much better bass than any Apple product I've ever tried. My car has really good bass, so I like now demand like bass at all times. And like I said, the noise isolation fit really helps to block everything out. So these can even function as earplugs. Like if you wanna sleep and listen to music as you're falling asleep, these are great because they also lay flat, which I love. So feel free to pick some up. They're also half the price point of a lot of other headphones and stuff on the market today. Why do you need to pay a lot for something that's quality? You don't, not with Raycon. So head on over to buyraycon.com slash ShallonXO for 15% off. That's buyraycon.com slash ShallonXO for 15% off. Goodbye. Thanks, Shallon, from a different hairstyle a few weeks ago. So let's talk about Demi and Max. So what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Well, some tweets have surfaced saying that, I mean, basically thirsty tweets that Max was posting about Selena Gomez, like, I love you, I want to marry you. And not just Selena, like I said, Ariana Grande, he commented like, my wife, like I say it in a Borat voice, my wife, <laughs> and then also Miley Cyrus, like this dude has spent his entire time online, like thirst tweeting at celebrities. Now he's on a soap opera, I think it's The Young and the Restless, so he's not a total civilian, but it's very obvious what his goal was. Snag an it girl. He wasn't tweeting at like some random reject from The Bachelorette. Actually, you know what? He might have been The Bachelor. He might have been. He was clearly fishing, casting his line out again and again to see if he can hook an it girl. And he managed to hook Demi. He like, yeah, I mean, he's been tweeting about her since like 2011. Maybe he's been a thirsty douche since 2011. That's super possible. Homeboy is 29. Like, grow the fuck up. But Demi thinks that all of these old tweets are fake. Bless her heart. Just bless her little heart. So she took to Instagram to lose it, lose her mind. So this is what she said. It's really sad when people fake images to put women against each other. It's pit women against each other. Okay. If women have conflict, that's between them, not you. But then I stop and think, it's hella rude, but damn, I get it. If you're using hella, you don't need to be a wife. You're, you're not ready to be a wife. You're not ready to be a wife. And I don't want to look at what's... I get it. And I don't want to look at what's really happening in the world either, but we have to. Yes, it's easier to tear apart celebrities and their relationships because 2020 sucks and scares the shit out of all of us, but it's only going to stay terrifying until we address it all and work on solutions together. Demi, that's true. 2020 is a garbage fire. That has nothing to do with your boyfriend thirst tweeting at women for the last 10 years. 
That has nothing to do with any of that. This can be true, and this can be true. She's not done. So while on one hand I understand and and have compassion for those who are so horrified at the reality of 2020 that they got to distract themselves with doctored images in order not to focus on how bad these times are. But on the other hand, if you weren't 13 years old trying to grasp the reality of right now, put on your adult underpants and write about what actually matters, please. I wish I had this kind of control over someone else. Like I've told you, I'm a Machiavellian person. And it's like, I read I read what's going on with Demi from the point of view, the first and foremost primary point of view of a woman. You know, oh fuck, like we've been there and we've just been bamboozled by a douche, a douchebag and who's lying to you. And suddenly it's like me against the world. Bah, 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 and you're just firing bullets at everyone who tries to talk any sense into you. But I look at it from his and I'm like, do you have like a 10 inch penis? Like, what are you doing to this woman that she is like, huh, that she thinks these images are fake? One of you shalligators, I won't, I won't call out your name. One of you shalligators DM me and you're like, I've been following Max for a long time on Twitter. These, these tweets are absolutely real. They're absolutely, I remember them. I absolutely remember them. Shalligators know what's up. We should be handing out Pulitzers just to the shalligators because your journalistic abilities are unparalleled, quite honestly, unparalleled. So, <sighs> And here's here are some here are some unwise things Demi has said about him. She did a uh, an interview with Sirius XM, some morning show. I knew I loved him the night I met him. So a week later, we went into quarantine. I was like, "Look, we're quarantining together because I love you." Quarantine either makes or breaks the deal, and it really made that. So I'm really blessed, really fortunate, and continuing to count my blessings every day. Demi, Jesus fucking Christ. We all know how this is going to go. We all know how this is going to go. I, it's going to go so fucking bad for her. And because here's what's going to happen. This guy, if he doesn't already, and I'm sure he does, realize that he has her by, by the throat. That no one can tell her nothing about him. You know? That she can't even accept that maybe he was tweeting cringy things 10 years ago. That's like... Not even that bad. That's not like, dude, I saw him getting a blowjob from another girl at One Oak. It's like, he was tweeting something. You can't even accept that. That like, okay, maybe he's got a cringy past. He's different now. That was all in good fun. Whatever, whatever. I'm different. She won't even go there. He is going to press on that. He is going to prey on the, the elasticity of that affection. And this is how abusive relationships start. I'm not saying he's an abusive person. I have no idea. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. He's a very calculating person. He's a manipulative person. And he's full of shit. I don't know about you. That seems like a pretty good trifecta for a very toxic, evil person in your life. And Demi is the inverse of all of these things. She's weak. She's vulnerable. And she's desperate for love. And I don't mean weak like in a... She's, she's fragile. She's wounded. She was a drug addict, like a heroin addict for a very long time. This is not a recipe for just... I feel super strong and good about myself. I'm sure she doesn't. If you say, I loved a guy the night I met him. That's not love. You could say, I was in, in love. So... In love and love have always been two very different things to me. I have fallen in love with many people. Who have I loved? Which is broader and deeper and, and like a rock, like a bedrock of feelings. And it's a thing in which I orient my behaviors around. Who have I loved? Like three people. I've fallen in love with like 25. You know, it's like that heady feeling. And when I think about who I fell in love with, I was never in a good place in my life. Never. It was when I just moved someplace. It was when I got laid off from a job. It was when I didn't have healthy friendships. It's when I felt bad about my body. It's when my career wasn't going well, right? I've almost, and I did a whole talk about this on Instream. You guys can go over there for some more raw story time. Look at how red I'm getting. And then my foundation, I look like a mime. The mimes don't even look like this. I just look like a head on a stick. Anyway, these lights are so hot today. When I have had those in love feelings, like I said, I did a story time on this because I was, when I first moved here, I almost created a heart locker with a guy, which is someone we just imprint on and we cannot, we cannot get over them. And it's because we imprint on them when our ego, our sense of self, our sense of identity, all of that, our heart, everything is not in a good place. So we see this person 
as an emotional getaway car. So it's like, I loved him the night I met him. That means you were going to love whoever the fuck walked through that door and was giving you attention. The first night you meet someone, the first week you know someone, the first month, the first year, people are still very much curating who they want you to see, right? First date, it's a peek under the hood. Oh, what do you like? Okay. We think we know someone, and I hear it from you guys. You guys submit questions to me, and it's like, we went on all these two dates, and 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 it didn't work out, and I'm just like, I'm I know I liked him so much, I liked him so much, girl. It was not the person; it was the possibilities. You liked the getaway car, and think about when you rob a bank. You come running out of that bank. You got the money. You got the die packs. Are you particular about what that getaway car looks like? And I don't like the paint. Can we just? Can we black out the lights? You're just like, does it run? Is there a driver? Let's fucking go. Pedal to the metal. Emotionally, we get like that too. I spent, I mean, I basically spent my 20s like that in a various series of getaway cars. I just wanted a guy. And I, to keep just extending this car metaphor, I'm so sorry. I was like a dog chasing a car. What would I do if I actually caught it? I was so hyper-focused on, does he like me? Does he want me? Does he love me? I literally never asked myself, do I like him? Let's say that every man in the world wants me. Let's say that I'm a princess in a tower and I've got all these knights lined up. And I'm like, hmm, would I choose him on purpose? Nine times that, no, no. One guy who I was so bananas twisted over, I mean, our breakups, it sent me into like clinical depression. I had to go on antidepressants. I couldn't pull out of it. He was 5'3". It was not my finest moment. But he was an emotional getaway car for me. He was famous. He was in a famous band. Everybody on the scene knew him. Everybody respected him. He had what I wanted for myself. Specialness, achievement, humility, notoriety. And it seemed a lot easier and a lot more socially acceptable to glom onto him, getaway car, than to seek those things out for myself. And it was only when I got that through my head and I was like, it's time to cowboy the fuck up with your career. It's time to write that second book. It's time to get that TV deal. It's time to be the thing you wanted from him. Be your own man. Be your own white knight riding up to save you. You know that Cher quote? I love this quote. She's like, my mom always tells me like, Cher, like, why don't you settle down and marry a rich man? And I say, Mom, I am a rich man. Ooh. And that's it. It's like, I am a rich man. I am a successful man. I am all the things that I think I needed and wanted from other men. And once I realize that I need to stop looking at guys as this thing I need to love and start looking at them as a mirror of what I am lacking and the indicator Okay, it's time to go get that thing. It's time to go get that thing. It's not him. He's just the vehicle. He's just the thing that showed me this. He's the fortune cookie I opened up and read. I was like, okay. Now I can be like, thank you for showing that thing about myself. I am going, you are going to leave. Put your penis away. I don't want it. And I'm going to do what I need to do to be actualized. Because then you're not looking for a getaway car. Let's go back to this bank robbery metaphor. Who robs a bank? Poor people. People who are bankrupt, people who need money. I'm not robbing a bank. I am the bank. I've got money in the bank. I'm gonna stroll on in there, deposit a check, break some necks. You know my phrase. I got all the time in the world because I got all the money in the world. So I'm gonna stroll on out, get into the cars of my choosing, and drive away at my leisure. There's no urgency. There's no exigency. There's no desperation. And that is dating too. I like you, I don't need you, I want you, but that's where it ends. I'm not desperate to have it, I don't need you in my life and you're gonna save me. I'll get, I'll get there when I'm good and ready. I'm sauntering out of the bank, I will stroll up to your vehicle if I choose to. I got a lot to choose from, right? Doesn't that feel peaceful, powerful, respectful, self-respectful? Don't you feel proud of yourself? Even to just inhabit that metaphor for a second. Huh, I'm strolling into my emotional bank, which is full and at my disposal. It's not this crazy mania. Because when we come from a manic place, we are 
easy prey to very toxic people. When we are looking for that getaway car, a wrong person, a toxic person, a manipulative person, you know what they feel like? Fucking heroin. They feel just this crazy adrenaline rush. Just like if you were in a car that was speeding out of control. You're like, ah, like I'm going so fast. But you are also terrified. You're also terrified. You're like, I'm going so fast. Are we going to die? That's not a happy, comfortable feeling, right? We want to be going a nice, leisurely Sunday drive. There are so many car metaphors in this video. I'm so sorry. I think it's because I just started like driving again <laughs> after like 10 years in New York. It's like, toot, toot, motherfuckers. We're going to do some car metaphors. <laughs> huh. So what you might be thinking to yourself is, okay, but you're making it sound like I'm not allowed to fall in love. And that if I do feel like that love feeling and I'm just like, oh, like so in love with someone that this is a bad thing and you shouldn't feel like that. Nah. No, falling in love is one of the most incredible feelings. Things are going well in my personal life, so I can, I can like say that. <laughs> anyway, I'm not saying I don't want you to have these heady feelings and just like that, that rose colored mist you know in your eyes when you're falling in love with someone but it goes back to the out of control car thing do you feel just like crazed and overpowered and also a little afraid it's like like i just that sort of gaspy feeling like this is moving really fast we're spending absolutely every single day together and i haven't done my laundry in three weeks and like i don't see my friends and you know blah 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 and i'm giving up all of these things that's not healthy. I just want you to have a more balanced and metered approach to things. And the way we can know if we're approaching things in a balanced and metered way is pay attention to what you're fantasizing about. Pay attention to what you're fantasizing about. I don't mean like sexually, although that's fun. When we are coming from a not healthy place, right? And we're coming from that fragile Demi Lovato turtle without a shell, very easy target kind of place. We have a very specific set of fantasies going on, don't we? If we're honest with ourselves, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Pay attention to what you're fantasizing about. It's like, I just keep thinking about him and I blank. Now, a healthy thing would be, I keep thinking about him and I having deep conversations, right? Or going apple picking, you know, because it's fall and we're a basic bitch unhealthy things i i just keep thinking about posting him on instagram and letting my ex see it and and just like oh my ex is at home and he's crying he's throwing up and crying at the same time because he misses me so much ha 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 that's a red flag that you're not over your ex that this guy is just he's just a seat filler your new dude is just a seat filler you're casting the role of boyfriend okay you're fine you you look the part fine if they have a functional if they have like an agenda that's attached to them you know you know how like you see on tablet covers like baby to save the marriage. Is this boyfriend to save the bleh? Boyfriend to save the self-esteem? Boyfriend to save the social standing? Boyfriend to save the finances? Boyfriend to save the lack of career direction? Because if I glom onto him and I'm a wife, then I don't actually have to finish law school because I don't want to anyway. And it's totally fine if I never really come up with what my career should be and I can just be a mom and like that's fine and no one's going to ask me. What are your fantasies trying to tell you? Fantasies are very, very useful, right? They resonate with us and we craft them on purpose. They're insulative. Insulative? Yes. They are designed to ameliorate something that's going on in our mind. The psyche will be heard. The psyche will be hurt. That bitch will knock and knock and get louder and louder and louder until she busts your door down. And you can do this the easy way open it when you hear that knock or you can do it the hard way and she's going to huff and puff and blow your house down what's the easy way the easy way is i'm going to sit with my fantasies i'm going to sit with my fantasies and i'm going to ask myself what this means okay say it's i cannot wait to post him on insta and have my ex-boyfriend just vomit all over himself with jealousy maybe the time isn't right for dating Maybe you're not over this ex. Maybe you need some closure and closure is something we give to ourselves by learning, by marking those red flags and looking them in the face and we're like, oh, why did I do this? But learning and growing and making peace with it, grieving, just being sad for a few days. Lock yourself in the house, binge watch the crown, eat whatever you want and just cry, 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 cry it out. It's okay, that's okay. It's not okay to try to wallpaper over other traumas. Oh, I just, I don't want to scrape this off. We're just going to put something new over it. 
You don't do that on real walls because it gets lumpy and wonky and weird. Emotionally, it does too. The psyche will be hurt. The hard way is to do that wallpapering. And then you're going to have a shitty relationship with this new dude you imported, like Demi. And you're still going to have that unresolved underlying issue, that psychological splinter. Demi's, I mean, you don't become a drug addict if you're a happy person. You just don't. If you're a, a non-traumatized person, maybe she's addressed these things in therapy. Hopefully she has. I don't know. But the fact that she jumped into this relationship so fast, so fast, is not good. But let's talk about what this kind of online behavior means. Are sometimes weird, cringy old tweets just weird, cringy old tweets? You know, we're living in a, a, an age of cancel culture, which is the stupidest thing in the fucking world. It doesn't even work. I'm still here. <laughs> and like everyone loves to like dig up things from everyone's past. It's just so funny. Like people do change. I don't think Max has changed. I think he is, I think he has, if nothing else, adapted his methods. Like I think he's a very sneaky person and is preying on Demi, you know, and I feel I feel bad for her because she she wants love and she wants stability. And he know that's the oldest fucking story in the book, dude. That's the oldest story in the book. You think that's a hard thing to craft? You think that's a hard con? I can't wait to have kids with you. What should we name them? Oh, I hope they look like you. Hook, line, and sinker for someone like Demi. For someone twice Demi's age. This is like the thing that society conditions women to want. Someone who just wants to marry you and be with you all the time and blah, blah, blah. And this is, it's not, it's not fake conditioning. We want this too. We want this too. Who doesn't want love? Who doesn't want someone who's all in? Who doesn't want that crazy, heady, rosy, mist feeling, right? But it can get out of control. So how do you know if this is bad or if this is, or if this is just, as Freud says, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Well, has their behavior changed? His, Max's, clearly hasn't. Clearly hasn't. And in order to know if like a guy is using you, whether it's for your online clout or your family's lake house or the sex that you give him or whatever it might be, the only way to find that out is to remove that thing. Is to remove that thing. I dated someone and I tagged him tagged him on Insta and he started getting all these friend requests. And I, I just had this like PTSD flash of my ex-boyfriend who I was with for like two years, who you guys know he is, who like had so many of my fans, fans in his DMs trying to fuck him. Shallon doesn't love you. You should hear the way she talks about you in video. She hates you. I could love you better. I could fuck you better. You fucking trash trash. So I'm very sensitive about about stuff like that. And so when when this dude was like getting these friend requests, I was like please don't accept these friend requests. And he's like, "Why?" And I told him, I'm like, "Look, like this is what happened in past relationships. You know, like 99.9% .9 of my girls are incredible and amazing, but that there is a sliver of people who hail you and nail you, you know? Like they it's just this weird weird dynamic of like she's my dating guru but I want to fuck her man like what is wrong with you what is wrong with you get a life eat some fruit and I told him like hey please please don't do this like I looked at him in the eye I was like please let's just keep things like between us and you know like and he's like no this is awesome why wouldn't I want all these new like followers I'm like your profile's fucking private like you're not a brand you're just a person like why do you need this and he was like accept 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 and I was just like okay when I look someone in the eye and I'm like please don't do this and they're like mm. there's really not a lot of coming back from this and like if you're dealing with a guy's online behavior and he's liking some Instagram models photos. First of all, sometimes it is just very innocent. Like I've watched an ex-boyfriend go through Instagram and he's like, like, swipe, like, swipe, like, swipe. And I was like, do you like every single person's photo? He's like, yeah, why wouldn't I? I was all, okay. I mean, I get, I guess, but for him, it did there. It was truly not deeper than that at all. He's like, I just boop, 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 boop. And I'm like, okay, well, <clears throat> I don't care if you like Summer Rae's photos or whatever, but if you're commenting thirsty things, it's weird. If you're DMing girls, absolutely unacceptable. Crimes escalate, right? Very few people wake up one day, they're like, I'm gonna go have an affair today. I'm gonna get a side chick. It's, 
I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see these in my DMs. Hmm, like that picture. Maybe I'll comment. Maybe she'll write back. Hmm. Maybe we'll go out to the bars. I'm just gonna play wingman for, for, uh, for this guy, for my friend, you know. And, you know, we talked to some girls, whatever. She followed me on Insta. I followed her back. No big deal. Crimes fucking escalate, okay? But if you were dealing with someone who is making you crazy about these online issues, I guarantee you he's making you crazy about offline issues. We fight about topics or we could fight about issues. The topics are you're liking that Instagram model's photos. You don't unload the dishwasher right. Those are topics. You got to get to the issues. The issues is you disrespect me chronically in front of other people. You won't post me on Instagram. I feel like a dirty secret in your life. I'm not integrated into all the aspects of your life. I don't know your friends. I don't know your family. You won't call me girlfriend. I don't know where we stand, but I'm going to localize it on you power liking Shallon Lester's photos, right? So ask yourself, what lies beneath? What's beneath this behavior? By contrast. The guy I'm seeing now, I was like, and I said this is a test. I said this is a test because I'm sensitive about it. I don't like people using me for clout. It's, you know, what nourishes you destroys you. You know, like I've worked hard for this career. I've worked hard for the influence that I have. And it's like, you want people to respect it, but not use you for it. It's a very fine line. It's a fine line. And I was like, would you want me to like post you and tag you on Insta? He's like, I mean, you can post me. I don't want you to tag me. And I was like, why are you, are you embarrassed? And he's like, no. He's like, I don't want random friend requests. He's like, I wouldn't accept any of them. Why would I? I don't know these people. He's like, I'm not trying to like get my numbers up because I'm dating Shallon. I was like, you know, like that was huge to me. That was huge to me. And I didn't tell him anything about why I was so triggered about things like that. Nothing. So when you're dealing with these sort of online behaviors, I think it's very important to come up with like two or three things that you will not stand for. Two or three. Not 10 to 12, not 70 to 80. Two or three. Why? Because the more things that you have, the more you dilute your power, right? And the crazier you look, the naggier, and you look like an emotional parole officer. You look like a mom. Who has a lot of rules? Mom. So come up with just a few things that are like not okay. And for me, it's like, please don't accept random friend requests. And if if you really feel like you have to, do not engage with people at all. That's what I require. And I always, I always tag on to this. I know you might not understand. And I know that might seem crazy or, you know, not indicative of anything bad, but if something's important to me, I don't always need you to understand it. I just need you to respect it because there's going to be things that are important to you that I don't understand. I respect it. Okay, that's your line in the sand. We all have our our decisions and our boundaries that are influenced by years of history that nobody sees and that nobody has a right to see. Nobody has a right to an explanation about why something is a deal breaker to me. However, I do think providing some explanation is very, it's very important so that you don't just look arbitrary and crazy. That's why I told that other guy, I was like, this is why I'm saying that. I'm not like, oh, I want you to only have like 200 followers. Like, no, because I've seen where this goes. And like I said, he looked me right in the eye. I was like, I don't fucking care. I'm like, that's interesting. Okay. Okay. And so while that seemed like a topic, that was an issue because part of the reason I said it is because I wanted to see how he reacted. That was a test. I want to see that if I give you a boundary that doesn't resonate with you, that you haven't personally experienced, that maybe doesn't make sense, I want to see how much respect you have for me. And the answer that day was zero. I don't have any respect for you. You said something's going to hurt your feelings if I do it? I don't care. Okay. Okay. That's why that's the past. <laughs> that's why there's someone else in, in the present. You know what I mean? Like, that's fine. But decisions have consequences. And if you choose a decision, well, you choose the consequence. So come up with your own personal peccadillos and see what people say. See their reaction. Much of the time, the boundaries we put up aren't, the, yes, they're to enforce our own safety and our own emotional real estate and everything. But I put up boundaries to see how people are going to react. 
Because I want to smoke out people who are not good for me. People who don't have my best interest in mind, you know? Like, I think that that's just as important. It's it's just so important and it's it's horrible. It's disheartening. You don't want to smoke out a turncoat. But emotionally, dude, we have to. And I'm not sure the boundaries Demi Lovato could be putting up with Max. Maybe it's like... We can be engaged, but it, it's not going to be a public relationship. Or you can date me, but I'm not taking you to any business meetings and we're not sharing finances and I'm not like introducing you to anybody in the industry. Again, if you think someone's using you, remove that thing. Oh, you only like me for my big boobs? That's funny. I'm, I'm going to wear turtlenecks and we're not going to fuck. Oh, that lake house that you like love, my dad's jet skis? Mm, jet skis in the shop. House is closed for the winter. S Put up these boundaries, see how people react. If they're here for the right reasons, it won't be a thing. The people who hate your boundaries are the ones who benefited from you having none at all. So look around your life. Look at the fantasies that you've crafted about this person. If you've crafted a fantasy about someone and you could honestly sub in almost anyone else, Maybe this isn't the right relationship. Maybe this isn't love. And once you get clear about what that fantasy talk is, you can begin to repel borders. You can begin to become bulletproof against it. Forewarned is forearmed. I hope Demi sees this. You know she won't. But <laughs> we'll be here for you when this goes south, Dem. Just sign a goddamn prenup. Please sign a prenup. All y'all sign a prenup. For more, click like and subscribe. We're going to be back tomorrow with more videos about Paris Hilton. We're going to continue our Paris Hilton series on how to date when you're an alpha. And it kind of relates to this, like how to not get taken advantage of, how to find someone who is your equal, how to know if you even want to find your equal. Ooh. We're going to be back. I'll see you later, shalligators. Mwah!